You may remember last week that viral Toronto Star op-ed from PhD student at the University of Toronto, Craig Damien Smith, about refugees in the air show. Simply put, his position is that the air show in Toronto should be banned because, well, refugees are going to be traumatized by warplanes flying overhead, by the evidence of the military, by loud noises. Now, at the root of it, it was pretty apparent that his issue was just that he didn't like the air show. And that's fine, no one has to like it. But he was invoking the refugee issue because he thought that would make it much more saleable to have it banned. Now, I didn't realize that this was such a widespread belief among social justice warriors. In fact, the response to that column was quite swift. People saying, yes, ban it. It has no place. It's all about military bravado. It doesn't actually do anything. There's no point to it. And essentially, the crux of this is that they think that Canadians who like the air show, hundreds of thousands across the country every year, that their rights are secondary to those that might not like the loud bangs or whooshes or see the planes overhead. Now, air shows are not for everyone. I realize that, but they are popular. They bring in a lot of money. And more importantly, they celebrate innovation. They celebrate technology. They celebrate a lot of advancements that we as a country should be proud of. Now we have a documentary being made in Toronto by Maya Bastian, who lives in the Parkdale area, not far from where the air show is, basically focused on the refugees' reactions to this. She wants to go around and film in real time the reactions of what people who are from war-torn regions of the world actually think about the air show. This falling in line with that old trope that we heard from that Toronto Star op-ed, that the air show is somehow incompatible with someone who is a newcomer to Canada. Now this idea of trigger warnings for refugees is not new Except for, it is really. I mean, the, the idea of trigger warnings aren't, but for refugees specifically, this is something we're only seeing really emerge in the last few months. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan is another example. They had a fireworks display out long ago, and one city councillor in Saskatoon was concerned about the impact that fireworks would have on refugees. Pat Lorgi wrote, Best YXE fireworks ever tonight, but I hope someone warned the Syrian refugees that the booms, bangs, and other noise wasn't from weapons. Now, she's a psychologist, so she's acutely aware of the impact that PTSD can have, and even though there was a great deal of negative reaction to her tweet, I have to give her credit. She didn't think fireworks should be banned. She didn't think that there should be anything that would allow the rights of firework lovers to be trumped. She just thought, hey, this is something that perhaps could rub someone the wrong way. But then people take that idea and start to talk about banning things. We've seen that happen with the air show as well. The documentary filmmaker in Toronto, who's actually trying to be aware of this, she wrote that this is not something she wants banned. She wants a conversation about it. No one, especially the immigrants and refugees that show up new to the city, they're not made aware of what's going to happen. No one tells them, hey, there will be warplanes over the city. It'll be loud, it'll be disturbing. So they're caught completely off guard. She said later that the air show is part of the Canadian fabric. In the 1940s, it was necessary. We needed it. Now I don't know that it is. It's a complex question, and I'm not advocating to shut down the air show. What I'm looking for is discourse. The problem is that for so many people, when you talk about anything that has to do with triggering or anything that has to do with refugees, they don't want discourse. No, quite the contrary. They want an ultimatum to be given. They want a one-size-fits-all solution that basically results in things that Canadians like being banned or certainly being made to be what they are today, which is so politically incorrect that people shy away from actually enjoying them. You don't need to love the air show, but if you don't, that doesn't mean you have the right to take it away from those who do. For the Rebel.media, I'm Andrew Lutton. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more? The Rebel will click here to become a premium member.